I'm back. Hello everyone, this is Game Frost, and yeah, this is a new video. Um, I just wanted to tell everyone, thank you guys so much for supporting my channel and watching my content throughout this month. I know it has been one month, it's very minimal, unlike other hiatuses that had like over two or three months. But now since summer vacation is finally starting, I can get back to making content again. Previously, we had 557 subscribers on our last video. Now, we've went up to 626. I can't believe, you know, we actually pushed this further even when I'm gone. And that really shows how active this small YouTube um, channel really is. And I'm really thankful for all of you that has been watching my content ever since. Um, so yeah, in this video, what we're going to be trying to do today is... Will our CPU suck when hyper threading is turned off? Now, I'm pretty sure everybody already knows that, you know, turning off hyper threading will probably suck on your C um, CPU. But I mean, for those that doesn't know, uh, I just want to show them a little glimpse of what it can do. So I'm going to try to turn off hyper threading on my i310-100 and we're going to see how much of a how much of a performance loss um, we get in gaming. So I hope you guys will enjoy this video and let's get started. The i310-100, a recent processor from Intel since 2020, has been a great budget CPU all around. It can turbo up to 4.3 GHz and have a base clock of 3.6. It is a 65 watt CPU, so cooling it should not be an issue when paired with a stock cooler. It is a quad core with 8 threads, with a 14 nanometer plus 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 node. The CPU itself also ha have features like hyper threading, which I'll disable later in the video, and has the latest instruction sets like AVX2. It also comes with a newer UHD 630 graphics. I will be testing the CPU without HT on four different games, such as GTA 5, Watch Dogs 2, Forza Horizon 4, and Apex Legends. All of these games are going to be played on low settings at 1080p to get as much frames as possible. I will also test the CPU single and multi-threaded performance using CPU-Z. So when turning off hyper-threading in the BIOS, our logical processors went down from 8 to 4 threads and that makes the i3 a true quad-core. Without 8 threads, the CPU itself is being utilized a lot more than usual. A, s a quick Google search, search states that hyper-threading can work on two problems at the same time. It doesn't mean that the CPU can do twice as much work just that it can ensure all its capacity is used by dealing with multiple, simpler problems at once. It's basically a similar case with AMD FX architecture, but of course that failed miserably. So since we have lost 8 threads, it's time to test the games out and CPU-Z as well.
Surprisingly, after testing the CPU with HT on and off, it actually performed okay. In CPU-Z, it was odd to see that the single core score for HT off is higher than HT on. In games like GTA 5, there was no not noticeable difference, and I think that with HT off, it performed slightly better. Watch Dogs 2 actually used a lot more CPU than I expected, but it still performed fine. Forza Horizon 4 kind of stayed the same, and Apex Legends, depending on what scenario you are in, ran pretty decent. Now, can I recommend disabling HT? No, not at all. Because without HT, I mean, without hyperthreading, there will be no frame dips on CPU intensive games and software like recording. Not only that, but the CPU is going to do a lot more work and there might be some lag depending on the workload. So it's best to keep it on. But of course, coming from a 10th gen processor, even without hyperthreading, runs really well. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want more content like this, you already know what to do. You can also check out my Discord and Ko-Fi page if you want to donate. Bye everyone and have a great day.